The year is 1995. A bunch of stuff is happening in the world of entertainment. Everyone is filling their local theater to watch movies about toys that can talk, violent murder, and things that didn't happen. The radio glistens with the sounds of angst and sorrow-driven rock. Britpop is in full swing as Wonderwall becomes a top 10 single, and Alanis Morissette is really mad at her ex-boyfriend. Yes, lots of great media is coming out in 95, with big achievements in both film and music, but more importantly, video games. The Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis are coming to the end of their life cycle. Earthbound, Chrono Trigger, and Mortal Kombat 3 are some of the last big games to come out for that generation of consoles. A series of more advanced consoles by a host of different competitors are all struggling to maintain sales and relevancy in an expanding console market, and Sony releases the PlayStation in every country that isn't Japan. The mid-90s were a huge growing pain in gaming, a shift in tech as well as a shift in culture. Games were becoming as advanced as they were violent, as the early stepping stones of 3D games were being firmly laid across a ground built on multiple generations of their 2D predecessors. Games like Star Fox, Doom, and Virtua Fighter were some of the first well-known games to feature gameplay and environments within a 3D space, breaking new ground and demonstrating the tremendous potential for what the future of games in the third dimension might look like. Though it wasn't until 1995, with the worldwide release of the Sony PlayStation, was that potential realized and made readily available in the living rooms of gamers all across the world. Flash forward to 1996. A bunch of stuff of lesser importance was happening, but amongst all the noise, video games were busy being awesome. 96 was a year that saw the release of many significant and important titles that shaped the gaming industry for years to come. This year of landmark releases included Resident Evil, Super Mario 64, Crash Bandicoot, Duke Nukem 3D, Tomb Raider, Knights into Dreams, Diablo, Pokemon Red and Blue, Quake, and so many more. 1996 was perhaps the first year where most of its well-known titles were in 3D, making it a true breakout year for games in the third dimension. That's not to say there wasn't important and influential 3D games in the years prior. Far from it. It's just some of the games released in 96 were able to push the use of 3D graphics to a potential that had until then been left unrealized. And in more ways than an early 3D light gun game or fighter could ever do. So what was so different about the games we got in 96? A lot of these titles here are certainly important, but they weren't exactly doing anything all that new as far as 3D graphics were concerned. Resident Evil takes a lot of its gameplay, as well as its pre-rendered environments, from the 1992 game Alone in the Dark. Crash Bandicoot is fully 3D, sure, but its area of movement is limited to very narrow walkways that take the player down a straight path, while occasionally shifting perspectives to a more traditional 2D side-scrolling view. Duke Nukem 3D, for all its accomplishments, still follows in the footsteps of Doom, Wolfenstein, and Hexen. It uses a ray casting engine to fake the appearance of 3D without actually being rendered in 3D. Nights in the Dreams is an incredibly unique and interesting game, but it too is limited in its implementation of 3D space by having a predetermined route around the level for the player to follow. All of these games are, on their own, significant achievements within gaming that innovated in a bunch of different ways, but they're not really the games from that year I'm here to talk about. From the original list of games I mentioned, there are precisely three games that I think pushed 3D gaming to an entirely different level while having a lasting impact on the medium of games as a whole. Tomb Raider, Super Mario 64, and Quake. These games are all similar to one another in ways all the other games I discussed earlier aren't. For one, they're all fully rendered in 3D. No ray casting tricks or pre-rendered backgrounds, the characters, enemies, and environments have been completely rendered with 3D polygons, with few exceptions. Two, they all have large levels with free movement and an emphasis on exploration. All three games are broken up into levels that cover large areas the player can navigate. Just about any part of an area can be explored if the game doesn't limit you to a set path, allowing for a depth to level design and exploration that hadn't yet been seen, as well as a large diversity of level variation. And three, they were extremely successful games that all became influential milestones of the genre they represent. Each game had a huge impact on the development of their respective genres in regards to 3D, selling millions of copies, spawning many copycats, and serving as a basis for many of the games that surpassed them. 
These three games are, in my opinion, some of the most important in the history of early 3D, which is why I aim to dissect them in service of understanding three things. I want to discuss what games may have influenced their creation and design, especially as far as their controls and mechanics are concerned, as they were developed in a world where there wasn't a lot of other 3D games to pull from. In addition, I want to analyze the games as they are, how their gameplay is designed, what makes it work, and more importantly, what makes these games fun to play. Finally, I want to discuss their impact on the world of gaming at large. How did these games influence and shape the games of today, and why were they so successful to begin with? Everything has a beginning. Quake, Tomb Raider, Super Mario 64, they were all important catalysts in the rise of 3D. So in order to understand them, I'll be taking a look at their history, development, and discussing the games that inspired their design. In the next video, I'll examine the beginning of 3D action-adventure games as we know them, by looking back at the creation of the original Tomb Raider.